Excellent. Welcome to the Best Blake Team demo meeting. Uh, getting on through September. Our September here in Texas is set to be the hottest on record. Really appreciating the AC these days. We got some cool stuff, so let's get on with it. Uh, we've got some new modules this time around. Uh, if you're looking to skirt around the user access control on Windows 10, we've got a couple of new exploit modules which can help with that. One from contributor Tim Wright and the other from our own Brendan Waters. Both modules use wsreset.exe to bypass UAC, but in slightly different ways. If you'd like to see a demo of these, check out the recording of our previous meeting where Brendan did a demo of each module. Pretty cool. From our own Wei Chen comes a generic module for exploiting a directory traversal in vulnerable archive extraction libraries. For applications which use an archive extraction library that does not check for directory traversal attempts, it is possible to write a payload to an accessible location and achieve code execution. This was written as a generic module as there are many, many applications out there which are vulnerable. And we'll have a demo of this. And from our own Shelby Pace comes a module for Libra NMS command injection via collect D graphing functionality, leveraging some improperly sanitized parameters to run a shell command via PHP pass-through call. Collect D does need to be enabled on the Libra NMS target and authentication is required. And we'll have a demo of this too. Community contributor Will Porter added a new AUX module targeting an SQL injection vulnerability in some versions of OpenEMR, which is software designed for managing a medical practice business and also managing patient records. Mm. Yeah, if that sounds scary, it kind of sounds scary, I think. Uh, for versions 5.0.1, patch 6, and everything prior to that, this module will dump all of the OpenEMR database contents to loot with the exception of the log and task tables, which maybe you didn't care about anyway. Uh, it could be some interesting stuff. And from contributor, community contributor Tawhud Shakia comes an exploit module for October CMS version 1.0.412, bypassing a target side file upload check by using a file extension, which does not appear in the October CMS blacklist of disallowed extensions. The allow, uh, uh, this allows the payload to be uploaded and executed on vulnerable targets. Authentication is required, but default creds may be sufficient. And some new evasion modules. Contributor Nick Trier came through with three new modules aimed at evading solutions such as software restriction policies and app locker with three different mechanisms to gain execution of user supplied code. First module uses the trusted binary microsoft.workflow.compiler.exe. Second module uses trusted binary presentation host.exe. And the third module uses trusted binaries regasm.exe or regservices.exe. So very cool stuff there. And we'll have a demo of this. All right, some interesting other work going on outside of modules. Community contributor C. Noten updated our RDP protocol library to use a lower configurable SSL security level in order to enable protocol negotiation with older targets. That's super cool. Our own Brent Cook helped smooth out the framework user experience at startup when certain payload generation fails. The behavior used to be for framework throw an exception and crash, but now we'll gracefully log an error and continue starting up. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good uh, catch show. We get to, um, actually 2038 framework is also going to stop working on 32-bit systems. So now it will fail gracefully. So yeah, yeah. look forward to that. So uh, be prepared, right? There you <laughs> yeah, go. Exactly. Yeah, well said. Um, and we've had a number of payload improvements as well, uh, many from Tim Wright. Uh, Tim added the ability to send key events to a target Windows interpreter, resulting in what appears as key presses by the logged in user. Tim also updated the Java interpreter so that the ls command behaves in a more usual manner. And Tim also updated a bit of Python interpreter payload code so that it runs under both Python 2 and Python 3. And our own Adam Kamek updated the PHP interpreter so that it can renegotiate its crypt TLV key. I always like to renegotiate. And some bug fixes. Uh, Egypt, good old Egypt, fixed a payload generation issue when formatting payload buffers as PowerShell byte arrays. Additionally, a comment is now added, uh, also added, which describes how the payload is configured. Our own Adam Kamek updated the CERT provider code and framework library to match the interface changes in the newer Rex socket library, allowing us to remove the pin diversion we had in place the last two months and return to using the latest Rex socket. This had some other cool features in that you can now specify things like the, the country and stuff that your CERT gets generated rather than it all being completely random. Uh -huh. um, so it allows you some configurability when you generate CERT with Rex. Nice, that's cool. 
Uh, also, contributing community contributor seen on an updated interpreter logic to use the target's path separator instead of a hard coded value. And C note and uh, along with community contributor hoodie help correct and update references and a handful of modules. I always appreciate that. All righty. And a big reveal. All right. The blue, so, the blue keep has landed. Yeah, blue keep has landed. Um, I, we had 188 comments on the pull request, which was kind of more than GitHub can display, but it, it <laughs> took it like a champ. Um, uh, thanks a lot for all the people who contributed um, new targets to it. I think we've got like somewhere around seven or eight targets now for you know three different versions of VMware, um, uh, AWS. Um, we've got uh, a physical hardware target that does take a few iterations to run, but will eventually run and can get a shell on your physical hardware target as well. Um, it's been fun. Uh, look forward to more stuff coming in the future um, as we continue to enhance both this module and the other um, uh, Deja Vu type research that we're working on. Yeah, right on. Yeah, it's super cool stuff. Uh, as always, you can keep up, keep up to date with the current Metasploit activities via our weekly Metasploit wrap-ups at blog.rapid7.com. And as always, a huge thanks to everyone who helps make Metasploit better through their contributions, and a special thanks this week to everybody who helped with the, all the Blue Keep stuff. That was super cool. Thank you. All right. How about some demos? Let's see the zip slip directory traversal. So I should see a couple terminals here. Um, on the left side, we've got Metasploit Framework and console running. On the right side, we have a target that is just a standard Ubuntu vagrant target. So this is the generic module from Way that will help uh, let us set up to do a directory traversal on the target, allowing us to drop a payload into a writable directory and uh, then we can execute it. There's lots of ways that you could do this. Um, you know, one could think of if you had like an, an up, uh, a website that allowed you to upload files and then it had an archive extractor and then it was vulnerable to this, you might target that to actually drop your payload off. And then if they had say an executable directory, a CGI bin directory, if you dropped your, ex your payload there, boom. So uh, let me show you here on the target side, we actually have this little script that, um, is actually part of the PR. It's very simple, a little Python script, but it's, it's illustrative purposes here. It basically just says, we're gonna use the tar file Python library. We're gonna open up a file, it's called msf.tar, and we're gonna extract it. And uh, this, this code here is vulnerable to the directory traversal, but it was a really nice simple example that Wayne included in the PR as a way that you could show it working. So the first thing we need is we need to ge generate the payload. And so we'll do that by setting our, our uh, information about the module here. Uh, let's see, there's a gold command injection, uh, the other ones. Ah. All right. So we need to set the local host. We also need to set the payload. Uh, we're just going to use a reverse um, TCP interpreter there. And we also need to set the path that we want it to ex extract this, this payload into. Uh, it's going to be looking for a relative path. Uh, the option is called target payload path. And uh, I know I know on this system here, I am currently in home.vagrant. I'm actually going to put the payload there in, in that same directory. So if I actually go do an ls of uh, this, I don't want the file here. Let's just do the directory. Now we should see that. Uh, there's nothing in this in this directory at the moment. So this is this is where there's a web server running on the target here. This is the CGI bin directory, very convenient. And so at this point, well, what we're telling is we're saying we want to extract this full uh, this 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 path that is a relative path that also has the file name that we want you to extract it to. And from there, you just do a run. And now at this point, it has generated the payload, which looks like a tar file. And you just SCP that over to your target because it's a demo, and then you've forgotten the IP address, and it is dot sixteen, and you run that, and secret passwords, um, not really. Okay, so now you can see we have the MSF tar file here, that is, contains our payload, so we will run the little MyTAR app that we just looked at, just to show it again, there it is, very simple, it is just going to open up I use the tar file open to open that archive and then run an extract all on it. And so with a little luck, I will intentionally do this uh, where 
It's going to give me a permissions error here because um, as vagrant user, I don't have permission to write into the that directory. Um, so I'll sudo it to get moved past that. Okay, so now if we do an ls, uh, get my zoom window out of the way. Uh -huh. Uh, that directory, we should see that it is now in there. Uh, it is, it, you see it's extracted as OHI. Great. So on here, we will now set um, a handler exploit. Sorry. Exploit. Use, not set. Ah. Let's see. Handler. And we will run. If you notice up here, we used set G to set our options globally, so we don't need to actually set those again. We, it'll just they'll be honored. So now we have handler, and I think, oh wait a minute, I actually want to run this as a background job. So run it as a background job, and what I'm going to do from here now it's running as a background job. I'm actually going to hit the web server on uh, my target. Jab in, and oh hi was the payload, and with any luck. Oh, any luck, James will correct me. Maybe James, it still didn't work. What else on there? You have an extra one in there? Maybe. Oh, uh, 28.128, I flipped the, the bits around. It helps if you run this with the correct values and then it works, yeah. So here we go, interpreter session one opened. You can see it via sessions, you can interact with it. There, get a UID, and you'll see this UID is actually the, the web user over here. Um, and I can't type it. Oh, I wouldn't look. No. WD. Thank you. Uh, my brain is fried. Um, so this this actually executed uh, as as the web you know here what the what Nginx is running as. Um, and so this is a, a, a you know it was written as a generic module intentionally because there can be many many applications from all sorts of vendors, big names you know to small names you may not know, but um, this vulnerability is is expected to be out there in, in many places. Yeah, definitely try it out on your own. Um, any service you have as a web service that allows uploading files is potentially vulnerable to this. Um, definitely, I wonder if this is in the MITAR attack framework. Do you think it is? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe? Mm. I don't know. It's in the Metasploit framework, though. Mm -hmm. All right. So give it a run. Uh, let's see, one more demo for me, and then one more demo for me. Um, so the, the Libra NMS um, collect D command injection. <clears throat> this uses a vulnerability in the collect D graphing logic. This one's uh, you know, simple to use too. On the right, I've got a Libra NMS instance here. I'd like to show you the UI uh, here. And uh, so Libra NMS is a network management solution. Uh, this is just localhost, which it, it really is this VM over here that we're looking at um, pointed to. And we've enabled collect D on this instance. And you can see that you verify that it's enabled by um, the tab here. A uh, quick shout out to Shelby for leaving very nice instructions about all the things to look for. It's very easy to replicate her PRs. Um, much appreciated. And so at this point, we've got the, we're lined up to, to, to use, use the thing, but we have to set some stuff. So. First, we need to set our target, and we should probably make sure that the target is actually still that. Uh, yep, yeah, looks like it, okay. We also need to set, in addition to target, um, we should set our, where we want to phone home to, which is there, uh, that's us. And we will set the, we need uh, creds for this one. So this particular VM uh, appliance already had predefined creds from Libra and NFS folks, so NMS folks. And so we got those there. And at that point, I think it's just as easy as are you in? Yep. So if things work out, we should end up with shell. Am I? Wall. Hello. Any site over there. So we are on the target. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward uh, module to run. That's fun. Any questions about either, any of the two modules I demoed? Or comments, observations, musings? Uh, just a, an observation. Whenever you get those kind of web shell sort of um, sessions, a common problem people run into is that my session died after 30 seconds. And that's actually by design 
um, usually your web server will have a max execution limit of like some number of seconds so that like a web page doesn't take forever and use the server resources. So usually like for instance, in the case of the zip slip vulnerability, the first thing you wanna do after you get that session is get some persistence on that box and then get yourself like a secondary shell. Um, just, just an FYI. Yeah. Oh, good, good advice. Thank you, Brent. I also have a question on the zip slip vulnerability uh, module. Would it, would there be value in adding uh, adding automatic payload uh, handler starts uh, similar to what we do with the PowerShell module? That's a pretty cool idea. I, I like that. Way, are you on? I'm not sure if he's on, but that's a, a good question for him too. I think any file format vulnerability could have a, a handler auto setup. Basically, anything you set a payload on that doesn't set a handler, sure, probably could uh, in the future. I want to talk to you guys about this demo today, and this is going to be, I guess it's an anti-demo. Usually you start a demo saying, I'm going to show you how well this works, and then um, you end it with maybe sometimes, oh, it didn't work. Uh, this time I'm, I'm hoping that it will fail. Um, that's, I know that's kind of a weird thing to say, but I'll stay with me here. So what I'm going to be showing you guys is some of the cool new evasion modules that Nick Tyrer has um, has nicely supplied to, uh, to Metasploit. He's been working on a lot of different kinds of evasion techniques that uh, different folks have been working on. And this particular one I'm going to show you here, uh, Casey Smith uh, did the initial development on. Um, these are evasions for a uh, framework that Microsoft has put out with Windows 10 and Windows Server, I think 2012 and later, um, that deal with basically whitelisting applications. Um, oftentimes, you don't want users to actually be able to run everything because that's just a big um, footprint to evaluate from the security point of view. Sometimes there's vulnerabilities and all kinds of things. If you look at their C Windows directory, there's so many executables in there. Do, you, do users actually need to have, well, have access to all those things? So AppLocker is a tool that allows you to basically sort of set a policy of like what, what apps can be run, why they, who they could be run by, um, just different kinds of parameters like that. It's really complicated and there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. Um, however, there's all these little side channels through which there's maybe one binary that you need to let all your users use. And if that binary has whitelisting, can you then leverage that to um, run the code that you want to run? So basically you're sort of leveraging the, the privileges that were bestowed on a binary by AppLocker to do something um, interesting. <laughs> so basically a lot of payload or something like that. So the first one I'm going to show you, in fact, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just type use evasion and show that we now have seven evasion modules and five of them are for AppLocker evasions. We're going to start with one of the newer ones that came in, AppLocker MS Build. So MS Build is um, clear um, info. So MS Build is, a, is basically a, 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 a software development tool that comes with the .NET framework. Um, it used to be that MS Build was something that you would only install with like Visual Studio because you're a developer. But because .NET Framework basically builds code on the fly, they started actually shipping it with Windows as part of .NET. So you basically now have development tools on Windows by default, which is pretty awesome. Um, I remember it used to be back in the battle days, you had to go buy a compiler for Windows, but you got free with Linux. Now you get free compilers with Windows too, as long as you like .NET. Um, so this is leveraging one of those tools that just happens to be in your box because you've got .NET installed. So let's go ahead and show you how it works. Um, start off with, um, because this is an innovation module, you need to set a payload first. So set payload. Um, I'll go Windows, I hit tab, sorry. Set a payload, Windows, interpreter, reverse, PCP. Show options, when I show options now, I can see the payload options as well. Um, I've got my options already saved in my, in my thing, so I don't have to set any of them, but um, when you run it, basically what it does is it just generates a file. It's very similar to like the zip slip phone rolling, really, it just generates a file and it's up to you to figure out how to, um, to get it onto, onto the remote box. I'm going to do a Martha Stewart moment here and just sort of show you that I do have the file already um, on the box. Um, I think type, uh, it's build.txt, and it's actually on the box. And this is actually a C sharp code embedded into a, I guess you could almost call it like a Visual Studio project, something that can be built with this build. And you basically build it, then it runs it and executes it. So it basically compiles the source code on the fly and then does the thing that you need. Um, in fact, uh, the evasion module tells you what commands are run on the target once you're on the target. This, is, this would be for something for getting persistence. Um, basically, I, I have creds, but because AppLocker, I can't run in my, my reverse shell or my persistence program, whatever. I want to, to use this to bypass AppLocker, noticing that I just did this. Um, and so let's go ahead and just try it. So you drone C, Windows, Microsoft.net uh, framework. 
And then under framework, there's usually a whole bunch of different um, subdirectories for each .NET version. Uh, we're going to choose one of the fours. Let's see. And it's a little bit different for each um, each version of framework that you have. So let's take a look here real quick. Okay, so I, it's V4. Um, v, V, there again. C Windows, Microsoft.net, Framework V4. But if you look at, um, if you basically want to examine these directories, each one of them is going to have a different copy of MS Build, depending on what version of .NET you want to target. So again, I can run MS Build right here, and then it would run MS Build .txt. Now, what I'm going to show you here is a little sad. Um, when I run it, it starts building and then says, oh no, threat found. So the cool thing is in response to these kind of techniques being published, Microsoft fixed their AV software to be able to actually instrument the comp compilation process and determine if the result of comp compiling something created a malicious binary. Um, so that gets, that's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> um, in fact, all of these app locker evasions, if you update your Windows to the latest version of Windows, all get caught. And that's kind of the, 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 the both the happy and sad outcome of, of evasion modules is that typically when they show up in framework, they get caught because now they're visible and vendors have a reason to make their detections better, which is part of the goal of that split in the first place. So um, there's a lot of other stuff you can do with these evasion modules and you might try at home. How, how is app blocker detecting, or actually how is MS Defender detecting this particular evasion, and how can I change the module to maybe bypass it? Um, I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. <laughs> yeah, so the cat and mouse game continues, but definitely some cool stuff that, that, that might lead the, the, the exercise to the reader down an interesting path. Yeah, super cool. Thank you, Brent. Excellent.